Hey guys, just a quick message just to say thank you for all the support you're giving us, buying our merchandise, watching our videos, liking, commenting, doing all that good stuff. It really does mean a lot. Just wanted to talk about the new t-shirt we've just released, so it's, it's uh, Strongest Brothers in the World, and also on the back, Clan Stoltman. So please make sure you buy them. They are, there's a load of stock available, so keep buying them, because we're releasing some shorts and some tracksuits shortly. Also, the plaided shirts, they're out next month, so stay tuned for that. And I just want to say I love you all, because without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So we are fresh back from World's Ultimate Strongman in Bahrain. Um, great show, nice to get a bit of sunshine. So we're going to just give you a recap of uh, each event for Tom and myself, and then we're going to do a little chat on what we need to improve in for the build-up for World's Strongest Man, which is in June, and our diet kind of going forward. And just a little bit of improvement that we're going to add into our training. So, getting back to... Bahrain, the first event was the Axel Deadlift 15 inch. So, how was that for you, big Tommy? That was alright. I think I did a PB anyway for 20, I think was the second last lift. The first event deadlift was meant to be death by deadlift, so you were meant to have, you meant to deadlift, run around, load, load, deadlift, strap in and deadlift again. Well, as you know, I've, Avers, Avers, they tested it with him, and unfortunately it didn't go very well, I think there was miscommunication with the sporters, they were trying to put it on and he was trying to put it on so they kind of scrapped that and just went to, you can stay hooked in on the bar and they'd have sporters to do it themselves. You should get timed on who's the fastest deadlift, not the sporters because obviously some sporters are slower than others. So the way that should have worked in my opinion was start at 280, deadlift 300, time that one don't time the spotters, deadlift time. Just because there was maybe a few that guys that could, were faster at deadlifting, but the loaders were spot, uh, slower. And that can just be due to fatigue and the structure of them. You know, some of the guys were loaders that were just young guys, some were older people. So I think having maybe the same build and spotters and know exactly what they're doing will maybe help in if this event's on in the future again. Can I agree with what Tom says? Obviously it's, uh, I think World's Ultimate Strongman are trying to use um, their initiative and think of these new events and you know rather than just do deadlift boom 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 mm. as we always do they're trying to make it a little bit more exciting which to me was you know it was a, a kind of a good spectacle of people's deadlift power and strength and speed but as Tom said you know the spotters that was maybe a little bit um, unfair on certain people and I think they have, they've addressed that as well Bruce so Maybe going forward, another thing would be do a, a deadlift ladder, like they've done in the Strongman Games before. It's a trial and error. Yeah. Uh, obviously that one, there's just a few things that can change and yeah. they'll make it better next time. So. I think that's what we, like, we're talking about, what we learn from our experiences as well as athletes, so what we need to improve on. And it's good to see that the promoters are also doing that. Um, so they're using this as a learning curve. Obviously it's the first time it was streamed on live TV on ESPN, which is awesome. Um, but if we're learning something, it's also good to see that the promoters are learning um, learning stuff as well. It's good that we're putting it on their Instagram to ask for feedback mm. and wishes that you don't already see because nobody wants harsh criticism and mm. they can just take it on the chin and know what they have to improve on, which is a good thing to see for strong ones. Felt good deadlifting, for at least my power's still there, but it's just one of them things where I lost balance and uh, I couldn't help it. I was stuck onto the bar. Literally had figure of eights on and I just, Luckily I didn't fall back with the bar, but yeah, it felt good. On deadlift, I don't think there's anything really to improve on. Like I said, I didn't go past 400 in training, and I pulled 420, and then I think if I had, if we were allowed to have baby oil or talcum, I would have pulled 440, but I just lent too much too back and lost my footing. It's kind of out of my control, and yeah, deadlift was probably my best event that day, so. Yeah. Deadlift was probably the worst event um, for me of the day. I was speaking to, uh, Adam Bishop and Terry, you know, about kind of changing up my deadlift technique a little bit. So I'm going to really work on that over the next couple of months, um, changing my kind of foot position and hand position in the bar, so I'm a little bit wider. Um, almost try and replicate how Eddie um, deadlifts. Eddie and I are quite similar in stature and our shape, so um, I'm going to look into that. My deadlift suit, I've had a couple of issues with that again. So there's a few things, that's my main um, takeaway from the, the Bahrain show, the World's Ultimate Strongman Bahrain show, is that, you know, I really need to address that deadlift and I can't just be saying, 
it's a week event for me. I need to be making up the number because if I was if I finished in top five of that, I could win these shows, you know. So um, for me, my other events, I'm up there, I'm consistent, and um, if I can get my deadlift up, then I feel that I'll be winning these shows and I can be the best in the world. So for me, that's all the motivation I need to to do to improve that, and that's the plan. You know, Tom and I want to be the best in the world, and that's what we're going to be doing. So that was event. Numero uno. Event number two was the mystery event, which was the... Was that, was that number two, was it? Yep, yeah, oh. the mystery event, which was the vertical rope pull, or the flag hoist. Um, so I was up first, because I didn't do so well in the deadlift, I went in first to do that. Last minute I decided to get Adam Bishop's gloves. Um, I then proceeded to ruin Adam's gloves, so my apologies mate. I'm um, sorry for ruining them. I'll send a pair down to you. but. It, it was a good event for me, I kind of learned quite quickly that it was the, the momentum that I needed um, as we talked in the previous videos, so it was a, a kind of quick learning thing that I needed to, to do that. Um, for me there was a couple of things I could do to improve the event, it's hard to do, but if they had it maybe in a cage to stop the weight from going back and forth, um, I think that would have helped a lot. Um, but again, that's something that they will improve on. They have the money, they have the capabilities of doing that, and that's a great thing about um, Strongman, is that we're always evolving and always pushing it. So for me, it was a great event. It was a great added um, test, you know, having this mystery event. It was pretty cool, because you could see everyone's minds just going crazy. And I mean, at the end of the day, all we're doing is pulling a rope. It's not, not rock. That's stuff. easy for the one who won the event, isn't it? That was in my head the whole time. I don't know. I thought the mystery event was going to be <laughs> some sort of farmers or yoke, but when I seen that flag hoist, um, when you see people do it, I thought it was going to be easy. And then when they said not to jump, in the warm up I was jumping, I was like, this felt alright. When they said not to jump, I was trying to, I just tried to just thingy it as much as I could and it went all to pot. So I think yeah, the swinging as well that is a bit hard, especially as well because there was wind there and uh, maybe a wee bit dangerous. I think if it was just in a straight kind of line, and it was just the fastest people to put up and down. <laughs> probably too easy, that's probably why they didn't do that. But um, the way Luke and Novikov did it uh, was good. I tried to do that, but it failed miserably. It failed big time. I should have probably asked for gloves. I never ever like do loading or anything in gloves. But then the way Luke was tying it down, I tried to do that with bare hands and do not do that with bare hands. Jeez. It like felt like I was burning everything and then I had to just thread it down which I think caused more energy then in biceps whereas Luke could just thread it and then use it again thread it, use it again where I had to come down each time in my biceps so it's a learning curve you know everyone learns it's good to go out there and if that comes up again we know exactly what to do so mm. I mean we to have a set of gloves in our bag now you know just yes every competition now <laughs> someone just messaged me with uh, there's 24 pairs of Amazon you can buy for a tenner, so <laughs> I'm gonna put that in my basket. They're going straight in my basket. <laughs> <laughs> Every single strawman seems to have gloves these days. Mm. You don't think you can use them until, well, look what happened there, you know. Luke used them and did a great performance, so it's, yeah. Just those little, little things for us as athletes, you know, the, the, the minor details, if you don't check them off your list, then that's what really can cause an upset. and. Um, it's just the last thing you'd think about for, mm. well, usually for us, isn't it? Because we never use gloves, you're mm. like, ah, there won't be gloves out in a mm. mystery event, and then boom. <laughs> yeah. But kind of abnormal events and making you think a little bit more, which is, I think, really good, rather than just your deadlift, squat, overhead pressing, you know. It's all very same, same, so if we're doing these mystery events, I think it's quite a good thing for the sport. And Everyone's on the same boat as well. Because mm. when I thought they said flag hoist, I thought they meant the one that you did at UK. Mm. I was like, yeah, here we go, and then. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Event number three was dumbbell. That went really bad for me. That's the worst I've possibly ever done on a dumbbell. Um, there's no excuses really. Uh, I just probably, I think my mind just switched off. I didn't really attack it as well as I should off. To be fair, the bigger dumbbells we've been using in the gym feel easier than the one at Woos. Uh, I just couldn't get it comfy because it had that bit of rope around it. Like a cage. Like, usual dumbbells you put it on your shoulder, as soon as I did that, I just couldn't, I couldn't set it on my shoulder, but again, it's just something you need to take away from, you can be good. I learned that you have to, you have to be able to do, uh, press more than one dumbbell, like I think, I thought pressing that big thick handled dumbbell that we have would make me great at every dumbbell, but 
that's not the story. So, like, I think that kind of dumbbells are getting more common now. I mean, we had it in Woos, and we've had it in Giants Live as well, that kind of dumbbell. So, I think I might have to tie some rope to a dumbbell and start pressing it on my shoulder, but that was a bad event for me. Like, the way Luke attacked his dumbbell, he looked, it looked easier at the comp than it did in the gym. And I should just maybe use more legs, but I think it was more fatigue as well. But you don't have excuses, you just go on and learn from it. So I think what I noticed as well when you were pressing is you press forward, you're, you're coming forward, which uh, yeah. happens sometimes when you're pressing. Um, like you say, that position in your, your shoulder was a little bit further forward, so when you were pressing, it was more in front of you. Uh, so, what Z and Terry wanted us to do is press it, hold it for like almost a second and then put it down. I just wasn't thinking because I think, like I said, on the bigger dumbbells, it's easier to get into that position mm. so you can get it up two seconds, bang. Whereas this one, you have to really like, even you, yeah, you yeah, have to be careful. Everyone has to get it in position, which is like six, seven seconds at then. Fire where I was just trying to go like this and press it as quick as I can. Mm. I mean, the only person there that could do that is Novikov, but I kind of like glad I did it at this competition other than like Worlds or, you know, well, Woos is massive, but like world strongest man would have been yeah. heartbreaking if something like that happened to me. Like I felt comfortable, I got six reps in, in the dumbbell, but I felt like I was blowing, you know, I felt like I wasn't conditioned to doing like your Novikov 10, 12 reps or whatever. But I think my strength is definitely there, it's just been conditioned to get to that rep. So I think going forward, Tom and I have talked about it as dropping the weight and going up to that 10 reps in 60 seconds, you know, the 80 kilo down, down, and really get conditioned into that. Um, events and that's what we need to do. I think that's my second point that I took away from this competition is my conditioning. I need to work on that slightly. Because um, hitting everything's good, but you need to be able to, yeah, do for example, there's a time limit of 60 seconds of a 90k dumbbell. You're not going to go and do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds mm. off in a bike. You really need to do that event mm. at a lighter dumbbell, a lighter deadlift, and really just get your body conditioned for mm. that event because. Yeah, that's where you can you can win and lose points. Like Luke said he was strong, but if he had another two reps, reps, reps in there, yeah, second. if he had his condition a bit, mm -hmm. so so that, that was good to kind of get. It's almost like blowing the cobwebs off this competition. So um, that's where yeah, we kind of that was at three. So that was three events, and we're kind of blowing a little bit harder. So we need to really hone in that conditioning. So yeah, dumbbell need work in that hundred percent. You know, yeah. working your lockout, that's something that we, you know... We can. I think we're going to both start doing alternative as well now, because, mm -hmm. like, like, we're getting, like, Luke's right side, I'm left side, and I think we need to start getting these right muscles stabilised. Mm -hmm. I know we do it on log, but you can get unbalances and stuff, and I think even maybe doing a 50, 60k dumbbell, and if this can get strengthened in a year and we can press 100k, then that's an advantage. Definitely. The people that can do two arms, have got such a big advantage in this event, yeah. so that's what we'll keep taking away from this as well as, I think, two arms, because you can... Two arms are better than one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, event number four, um, we had the loading. Loading medley. So what we had? Tire, shield, stone. 15 metre tire, 10 metre stone, 5 metre shield. So Onto a high platform, any six. <laughs> It was really high, it was yeah. one of the highest platforms we've loaded on, wasn't it? Yeah, when you look, when I looked at it at a distance, I thought it was normal height, but that was, that was alright. The good thing about that kind of event is, I mean, we did alright in it because we were practicing. I mean, the weather here was bad, but I mean, the things we did do when we could do loading is we did mm. three or four implements at like 20, 20 metres. So for me, I, I came second, I felt alright. I don't feel as fast coming back. Mm. So at the implement I felt fast, but then I felt flat fluted when I did that quick change of direction and coming back to the next implement. I should have just been sprinting pick up like I used, usually do, but again, that's just the extra bit of weight, not kind of doing any of the extra bit of work, you know, on a Wednesday or my recovery day. So again, I can take away that I'll be adding kind of shuttle runs and fast feet drills into it just to really get that speed back up. But worlds and like at Britain's those kind of shows that I've been really fast both ways. So it's just a, again a learning curve and good to see where I am and kind of the loading stuff. So. Mm. Yeah, same, same for me. Um, I just took my time with the, the shield because I knew I had to get it up a little bit higher. So I managed to set it up higher in my chest and I could just place it down. I noticed a lot of guys just picking it up and going. Yeah. So I had to shun it shunt it up a little bit. Um, but again, same as Tom, just the the speed wasn't quite there 
or the conditioning wasn't quite there as it should have been. So again, we're going to be doing a lot more conditioning um, into the training and, and prep for Worlds. That's something that you're going to see. I think you're going to see a different body shape from Tom and I from what we were like at Woos um, compared to Worlds. And we're going to come in looking a lot more, we're going to be huge, but we're going to be athletic. That's that's my kind of goal. Yeah, because Worlds is all about, you have to have a, a balance of conditioning mm. and thing. It's not like, I mean, other comps, like for example, Arnold, you just want to be a big mass one. Mm. So that's what's hard about it, you know? That's why going from November to June would have been a very hard place to judge if we didn't do a competition. Yeah. Like, we could have been training good, Luke could have been going into that, feeling fit, and then boom, loading comes, and I could be going into that dumbbell press. Hitting nine, ten reps, bang, you know, not fit, hitting anything, doing wee mistakes. So it's good, like Luke said, to have a calm in between, you know, to break up the kind of training cycle for worlds. So now it's like 12 weeks to go. Event five, the Atlas Stones, 10 stone run, ranged from 100 to 200 kilograms. That was the hardest I felt in the stone. Oh, I mean, going up to 180, 180 was good, 200 I nearly failed, which was a would have been pretty bad on me, but I think it was just a dusty stone. I mean, nobody else had touched it, mm -hmm. I don't think, before me anyway, so it's one of them things, hot weather, dusty stones. I still loaded it up, and mm -hmm. luckily I still won, because <laughs> I was people wanting world records. I was never doing it for a world record. I just wanted to, like I said, it's fitness. I wasn't comp fit. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get every stone done in a reasonable time and uh, come away happy. And I did it in like a minute seven or a minute five, so it's still respectable. Mm -hmm. It's like the third fastest, and, Still pretty respectable, yeah. since you've done, you know, at least I loaded them all, which is a kind of bonus, you know. Yeah, for me, I, the stones felt really good, actually, I was quite surprised. Uh, 190, I had a lot of stumble, 190, but it felt really light picking it up. Um, and then I think I just kind of blew myself out. The 200 was a lot of dusty and I didn't get to grips with that. But that's something that I'm going to really throw in every week now, stone, 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 stones now for, for Worlds. Um, just do different variations, stone to shoulder, loading stones, um, and that's something that I think we really need to kind of go in and be confident that we can come one, two in the stones. Obviously Tom can, I feel that I'm one of the best in the world at stones on my day, so I need to kind of really prove that. So yeah, so it was a great, I mean for me, Woosu was a good show, nice one to start the year, big shout out to Don and Mark for like, you know, inviting us over there, um, it was so cool to be part of. Looking forward to the next one. So. With that being said, you might have noticed we had a little bit more of a, a bloaty belly in there. Luke was actually, I'm glad that SPD actually sent us out a 3XL belt the day before we left because I, know, um, I, I thought it. I needed it and then Luke came to me and said he needed it as well so we're lucky because if we didn't have that we'd been doing everything beltless. Yeah, so it was a bit, <laughs> yeah for me that was the heaviest I've been, I was up to 168 kilos I think by the time I was competing which is, which is big for me. Um, normally my weight's 165. Um, it was just something I was trying a lot of it. Like I said, yeah, it's good to experiment. You know, yeah. you can't just exactly be in your comfort zone. You need to go out that and go, look, like, oh, what if I put on 6K? Let's mm. see. You know, obviously your strength was there. You know that in the heavier comps, you're going to mm -hmm. be dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> dynamite, here we go. So, yeah, for me, I'm probably going to drop back down to 165 for Worlds, be really conditioned, you know, come in looking like a big old beast and um, that's that's my goal now for the next three months is just to be really conditioned work in the deadlift and you know really push it because I think you know we we're both in agreement with with going forward now in prep for worlds our conditioning's got to improve it's just being consistent in it like we're consistent in the gym but then it's just getting those events being consistent yeah. again and I, I want to be go back to the way I was at worlds just past I think being like 179 180 is good but then I put on this extra three or four K for Bahrain and it's you know you can tell you know if you put that three or four K on my body's not kinda caught up and it's I mean I'm feeling a bit kinda too big but that 180 that was a perfect package I think at Worlds take out the wee mistakes I think that's a good package mm -hmm. for me to be at so Beautiful. we're gonna work towards that get conditioned again work on weaknesses you now we've added things that we've never kinda really trained before yeah. we're doing events twice a week which is new to Luke, new to myself, but it's trying to get as close to a world's strongest man uh, pattern as we can, mm. so it's going to be good. Well, it's going to be our, we're all, all our eggs are in that basket. I can't wait. You know, from Monday, that's when the prep really starts. Going to be smashing everything. Nathan's working with us on their diets, as per usual. Um, you've got your coaches. 
and I'm I'm just excited to really, you know, push things. You know, so I've got my checklist I want to hit weekly. I was talking about it earlier on in a video I did, like hitting that kind of daily, weekly, monthly checklist that you have to tick off. You know, I think that's really important to do. That's how you keep motivated, and that's how you keep motivated to being the best, which is well strong as man. So we can hit those daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, and everything's going on schedule. We know that we're one step closer to worlds. And if you miss that day or you miss that, in, it's just a hurdle. And you know, it's mm. get wake up the next day and do it again. But just as long as you're as consistent as you can be, and uh, don't make excuses and just get up and lift weights and mm. do what you love, then you're going to be there soon enough. So all in all. 4th and 5th at World's Open Strongman Bahrain, first comp of 2021, next competition, World's Strongest Man. And then it's a busy calendar after Let's that. Let's see at World's Strongest Man if we can get a 1 and 2. You better watch out guys. 1 and 2 in the qualifying rounds. <laughs> World's Strongest Man, go there, smash it. Be that kind of lightning fast, strong, athletic shapes that we're renowned for. That's what we're going to come back in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, thank you for the support. Keep liking our YouTube channel. Stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And please remember to buy the new t-shirt because it's World's Strongest Brothers and we appreciate your support. Don't just buy that, buy the spicy one. Buy everything. everything. Thanks for watching. Keep ringing that little bell. Ding dong. Ding, 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 ding.